My name is Terence Corrigan. I'm a policy fellow here at the Institute of Race Relations. I've had a long-standing relationship with, uh, with this institution. I'm very proud of that. We've taken on things that have often been very unpopular and very important for the future of, of, of South Africa. Right now, the focus of my work is land, property, and what what that says about the general trajectory of, of, of policy and what it means for, uh, for South Africa going forward. It's development prospects, economic growth, and very much the status of, of citizenship that, 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 that people have. If we go back into South African history, some of the greatest injustices have been done around, have been done around land, have been done around the right, to, the right to own property, for people to stand independently, to look after themselves, to take care of themselves, to chart their own, their own material fortune, if you like. And I don't think that we have ever, um, as a country, come out of that, that, that ethic of paternalism, that ethic of, 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 of state domination. In 1994, we were promised a new dispensation, one where people would be, uh, would be able to, to, to take an active role in uplifting themselves, where, for black people in particular, the denial of property ownership, which had been such um, an insulting and integral part of the, of, of the apartheid, the colonial past, was going to was going to take a turn, was going to improve. What we've seen though is that government policy has prioritized the role of the, uh, the, role of the state as opposed to the role of private citizens and their ability to, uh, to, own, um, to own property, to develop themselves, to dream big. We've seen land reform, for example, shift from um, a, a policy designed to, uh, to restore assets, to, to, to enable black people to develop the asset base that they were denied to one where the government now wishes to control those assets and merely grant people access to them on condition that they meet certain um, certain state imposed quotas. This is economically unsound and it also chips away at what it means to be a citizen. It makes it makes beneficiaries permanent, permanent subjects of the state, the subject to permanent st uh, state decrees. And as uh, empirical research has shown, it's also not um, not helping people to, to, to uplift themselves. There are swathes and swathes of land where, um, where people are eking out in existence and can't even sign, um, sign leases with, with, with state officials. We need to turn this around. What we've also seen lately is talk about expropriation without compensation, and it's being, it's being sold very seductively as a means to redress past, uh, past injustices. That's an argument that, that, that one has to, be, has to be sensitive to, but in practice, what it, all this stands to do is to destroy the notion of property itself, whether one, uh, whether one is an established farmer, an emerging farmer, or even an urban householder. This stands to undermine one's asset base. It stands to, once again, turn one into a, into a, permanent, into a permanent subject to the state, not a, not, not, not a true citizen. And our work as, as the Institute is to, is to take a stand against this, to try and explain why Property rights, no less than freedom of speech, no less than the right to assemble, are part of, are part of both a rights-based order, but are also part of a, of a robust economic order, one in which people can prosper, one in which people can prosper for themselves, can uplift themselves, can make their own decisions, can innovate. And this, I think, is the South Africa that ultimately we, um, uh, we want to create.